At Serum Hydraulics, we've been designing and making reservoirs for 35 years, and we often get customers asking how to design a hydraulic fluid reservoir that's right for them. So in this video, we'll go over some of the basics. First, to calculate the size of the tank, take the volume of fluid you need and add 25%. This will ensure there is always enough for safe and worry-free operation. Next, specify the type of fluid you'll be using. Is it water, oil, or something else? and choose a suitable material to construct the reservoir from so that the inside will never corrode. Common options are carbon steel, plastic, alloy and stainless steel. Then consider what environment the reservoir will be used in and decide whether the outside needs to be corrosion resistant too. We recommend 316 stainless steel for demanding applications. For filling, we recommend using one and a quarter inch BSP. For a great range of options, consider Elisa polymer caps. They can be equipped with foam to stop dirt entering the reservoir, pressurised or breather caps to allow for the expansion of air and fluid, splash guards to avoid spillage, and dipsticks or indicators for checking levels. Check out Elisa's website for the full range, we can fit them all. Add a drain boss at the bottom of the reservoir with a plug or a drain valve. You could also use a magnetic plug to attract steel contamination. If it needs to be secure, use a locking valve. To be able to clean the inside of the reservoir, add a hatch or manhole on the top. Adding sheet metal baffles will force fluid to take an indirect route to the inlet port, allowing time for contaminants and particles to settle, cuts aeration, gives better cooling and lowers the strain on mountings. Use a diffuser on the return port so that fluid doesn't spray into the tank and cause air bubbles, which could damage the system. Take a look at Stealth return filters. Now consider what needs to be mounted on the reservoir. Flat ceiling surfaces need to be rigid and not thin material that will bend. We use 6mm stainless or carbon steel plate or 10mm alloy for lids, filters and parts. This may seem thick, but welding does distort metal, so this thickness is necessary. Make sure that all the joints, including screws, are sealed, so that rainwater, for example, can't leak through into the reservoir fluid. These are some of the most important features when designing your reservoir. If you have identified exactly what your application needs and you can find an off-the-shelf reservoir that works for you, then this is often the cheapest and easiest option. If you're thinking about our MicroPack single or two-speed pumps, we make MicroPack reservoirs to fit. If you have to make one, here are some key tips surrounding the manufacturing of your reservoir unit. Very small reservoirs can be made from clear acrylic tube, metal tubing or even box section metal, with end caps either as push fit or welded on. This is very cost effective and minimises points of leakage and failure. On bigger reservoirs, laser cutting and CNC bending are great options for a solid build. Bending is cheaper than welding, so keep welding to a minimum. Especially avoid including small and intricate features that are difficult to weld, and this is very often where leaks happen. Try to laser cut the mounting holes into the sheet metal wraps in one array on one sheet, as this gives amazing accuracy. And remember, always leak test it. Never take a chance. Thank you for watching our crash course in designing hydraulic hand pump reservoirs. As the hand pump experts, we've got solutions for a wide range of demanding applications. If you need more tips and advice, talk to us today, comment below, or find out more at serum-hydraulics.co.uk.